Yo. What up, dude? What's up, man? Because we have the box. Nothing. So that's automatically 10,000. What's Sweet. going on with your boxes, dude? You can't get these freaking things online? Nah, the um, the Ubuntu keeps uh, keeps breaking on me. I've done like three, like four now. <clears throat> um, I can get yeah. everything besides that. It's like, yeah. Well, all participants, all participants. Um, I'm gonna bring up my machines. Hold on. Yeah, do it. It's weird. Hmm. I can almost help troubleshoot a little bit. Yeah, it's something with my network too. Pretty sure. Pretty. Well, first thing we'll do is go and check to see if we can get IP. Yeah. All right. Oh shit. Hold on. My my computer's about to die. Hold on. I gotta see this shit. There's another by the Try to leave and take that one. I see them. They're coming back around. I think so. I see. I see the flag. I don't think they see me. Oh. No. I mean, I am. Uh, I think I'm Trying to hide with the high waves. Oh, uh, they're coming towards me. No, no way they don't see me. I don't know if they see me or not. No way. They're looking for me. Oh, they're looking for me. Thank you, high waves. All right, let me share my screen. Uh -huh. Yep, should be allowed to. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go. Yep. If you want to take the other yep. rowboat, it's to the right All of the right. island. Like, you know, like the you know where the waterfall is? Keep going that way. Keep going you the way of the so do you want you want me to check my IP? I don't yeah, that's what I would do. See if you can get one. Well, we're just gonna have to keep doing runs like this. They're they're leaving, but don't be fooled. Ten oh oh three. Long way. Yeah. I mean, so that I mean, you are technically well. Try to ping eight 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 eight. That's a long way back to the north. Bink, 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 bink. No. Yeah, you, you can see it. Unreachable. All the lights. Yeah. Wow. That's what I did. You're not kidding. So you get an IP, but then you're unreachable. All right, let's go to your uh. Let's shut down your Ubuntu. No, they were going away from how, the how, island. How that off? Yeah. Cool. There you go. I, that's why I'm saying maybe you should bring the robot around. And let's check maybe. the settings. Wait a second. Do you have... Um, did you just then have PF Sense up and running? No. All right. So with these you know the machines... Is? So that, these machines that we've set up yeah, in this, like these, these last couple labs, or whatever, you have to have PFSense uh, running going, if it's configured now. right. I still want to see the configs, though. Let's look at yeah. the settings still. PFSense is like the you first. Uh, it took me a while to figure this out, too. Bing. Check advanced. Bing. Per it, perfect. I saw it when I but then PFSense should be the one that's bridged, and I'm sure it is. Well done, of course. There's a shipwreck. And then you got, is the second adapter for PFSense up, up and running? Oh, okay. uh, what do you mean? The set is, go to our network on PFSense. I'm going to stuff. stuff. You still see him? Now go to adapter problem. two. Yep. Oh, yeah. Running. Yep, yep. You're good. All right, now, so all you need to do I is, went, like, I went I said, fire up PFSense and wait till it fires up to, like, the main menu. Wait till it basically stops powering up. And then from there, power on your Ubuntu. You can just you can just like literally and minimize. Not going to. Minimize it when it's done. We will do these small little runs. That's probably your problem, Dave. 
Uh, maybe, it? maybe it is. But let's hope it's that simple, right? Yeah. Because I, because my my first Ubuntu, I don't know what I did. Sometimes I just play around. So yeah, I just started like to, down, like downloading a bunch of stuff, like like the guest editions. I downloaded it through commands. Yeah, I think I, I messed it up like it. that, and then it was just acting really weird. That's and I well, that's that's why you have them, and you can break them because yeah. they're not they're not they're not too hard. Honestly, it takes like fifteen minutes max to fire one up. So where where are you on right now? Huh? Oh, uh, what lab are you on right now? I'm on seven three, I think it is. Seven three, I think I'm on five still. I mean, I'm, I'm, I skipped a few, though. I got to go back and do Valhalla, um, Honey Pot. Uh, I got to do Honey Pot, too. I got to do Honey Pot, too. And then I missed one more, too. So it's not like I've done them all. There was one that I just skipped because it was too long. All right, there you go. That's all, That's what you want. That's what you want to see. Now try a bunch of... Okay, I'm about to sell. Come on, baby. So what does PF Sense do? It just helps you... Helps, helps to splunk, right? <clears throat> like, think about it, though. Like, this is the... Um, we have configured PFSense to be a, like a DHCP server or whatever. So that yeah. this machine is grabbing like um, IP addresses for the other machines. Oh, like it took me a long time to figure this out, but like because this is the bridged one, and then you have the uh, Vol network running on the on the adapter two, and the others are just on the Vol network. They're using PFSense as their like basically their. Uh, um, DHCP server. Mm. I mean, I, I say that with a lack of confidence because I don't know exactly if, if that's right or not. But that's basically what's going on here. Is you can't or really I, you can't I really get online I'm, unless I'm you have that. Up. The boss that yeah. You that Hopefully it works. If it's, I'm if hoping. it's as simple as this, then I feel like I wasted so much time. <laughs> well, that's all right. It's always good to play around with these things. They don't. Uh, they, yeah. they don't give us. I was kind of pissed because I just I deleted like right. 20 virtual machines the I had. I was, now now I'm kind of kicking myself, but fuck it. Thousand, I, mean, 10, yeah. I need to practice setting them up and tearing them down anyway. Yeah, same, same, same. Right. Okay, I'm a little bit used to it. This one lab is, is important, I think, because this uh, this does seem like it'll be something we would do right off the rip in a job. It's yeah. like ha like handle the log. I don't, think, I don't think boss items. Not too sure. So so I think PF sense. I think that's a function of being a firewall, Dave. I think that the re the way the reason they can give us connectivity, like it's a firewall. Um, it's it's functioning as like a network device and a firewall at the same time. Are they landing? I'm on my way. Oh yeah, I can tell you it's working right now. I can already I'm see on it. My way. On the top top. Yeah, line. I can already see it too. So I do got an IP. If this is really it, bro, I cannot believe myself. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was that. All right. Let me just try to go on Firefox. No, yeah, do it. Because you need to use Firefox to, for the rest of the lab. You got to go to uh, yeah. Splunk, PFSense, and uh, Demisto a little bit later. Dang it, man. Boys. Uh, I believe so. Oh, as far as I can tell, I can see their mask is still up there. Did it, did it explode? Or did it, how did you light it? What do you think about taking the sec plus? Uh, I, was, I was about to study for it here in a little minute. Um, I'm fired up about it. I'm taking really? that. In, I'm taking that in with network plus. Believe it or not. Really? Yep. That's good. That's good. That's good. It's yeah. not. It seems to be fine. Right, just sharing. It'd be oh, a foundational thing. I can only see one. 
Okay, should work now, right? Can't yeah. See. I Oops, you got a dot. That's, that's All I can see is that one mask is down. Oh, God, and another explosion just happened. So I'm looking at fire right now. Check that little period at the end, um, though. Ship. I'm seeing fire. Yeah. Delete it? Yeah, get rid of it. We're going uh, down. Oh, you know what you need to do? We're going down, Brennan. You did it. I know what you need to do. Okay. Open up oh, your terminal. You need to start yeah. Splunk. That's true, because they had, like, oh, yeah, just, like yeah, I saw yeah, the first explosion. That's, that, that's, uh... And then the second one came... I saw the second What the fuck is the command the on that? actually had fire. Like, pseudo... No, 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 no. Where did you see it? There it is, there it is, right there. I just saw it. Where was it? Go Fred. up or down, up or down, which, whichever way you just were. I just saw it. Go up, yep. Right there. This, down, this down one. Right. Down one. Yeah, there it is. That's it. Yeah. Pseudo op splunk bin. Yeah, I saw them. I see them. I don't. I don't think they. I don't think so. They're still mm -hmm. seem to be floating. I'm gonna see how much speed I can mm -hmm. get away with. There you go. Now, don't forget. Whenever you want to do this next time, just hit up on your thing, on your keypad. Just hit, hit up, and you'll, you can go into the commands you've already put in. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So right now you're about to do labs, or are you just about to study for this? I mean, we were supposed to study. I got a weird feeling no one's going to show up tonight, but um, if uh, if no one shows up by like six fifteen, I'll probably crank out some labs. Yeah, I'll probably I'll probably eavesdrop too because um, what was I going to say? I want to take the stack plus, but I'm going to take it like a little later. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm kind of in a rush. I'm kind of yeah. Anxious. To get settled. Yeah. I'm gonna pick up the actual chest. All there right, you thank, thank you. It bingo, worked. bingo. Yeah, I already, I already did it all, but it was just acting so dumb. I did that a hundred times. I must have done it a hundred times. Right now, we could get the get the chest to make the loud distraction noises. That's what I'm saying, though. I'm getting sick of not understanding why yeah, she's I, I broken. Yeah, I don't really do fight them, because I can take everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm tired of getting stopped by things. I want to be able to figure shit out now. Yeah, I just need to put something in I wonder which labs I've skipped over. Honestly, the labs in, I think it was, what was uh, the NS class? The NS network, module? Network, network security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which ones? Did you do all of those? I don't remember. I think so. I've kind of. I, I, I really yeah. did, like, honestly, like, had <laughs> I was so busy with other stuff. I didn't even get a chance to, like, really. Do yeah. That. Well, there, I mean, the ones that are important are the ones, like, like this one, for instance. Like, the ones that I don't really think are that important are where, where you just go into, like, Linux and, like, enter the correct command to get yeah, the thing, to get the thing turned yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay, sure. I now I know I'm how to turn it on. Rage, it's explosion. <laughs> Helps me. But like, uh, like the wire. You guys worked on Wireshark a lot. Oh, there, yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey. There was a lot of that. A lot of like looking, trying to figure out how to how to look at packets. You can just take my stuff. Yeah. That's not how this works, buddy. You can't just take <laughs> you can't my stuff. Yeah, he's, stuff. he's funny. Yo, he, he he's came out he's much road. less of an asshole than I am. No, no, yeah, he is. He's a good kid. I, like I was a bad kid. Yeah, that's, that's... Here's Mahmoud. Just go all the way in. It was a dude from the, it was a dude from the team. The ship is still there. It's still in the back. Yo, Mahmoud. All right, you're good to go, Salcido. Hello? Yeah, Mahmoud, what's up, man? How are you guys? Good. We're just uh, helping David get his lab squared away real quick. Oh yeah, sure. How did you did you understand right away that you had to have PF Sense on before your other machines? It took me a while. It, it, um, I knew it because you're connected via the PF Sense. It's like yeah, it's like your DSUP. But yeah. for some reason, my PF Sense DNS is not working. 
So it's like I can't get to the internet whatsoever. You can? We, I cannot. We tried everything. It didn't work. So. Really? You're in a breakout and everything? Yeah. Earl couldn't get you straight uh, out? You no, know, Earl couldn't. So we just uh, connected to the internet via the. Uh, Bypassing the uh, PF sense. Okay. All right. Um, let's fire up some questions, huh? Shall we? We should. Uh, Kaiser is not here. Uh, Kaiser was. I uh, told me he's probably not going to make it tonight. I don't know where everybody that used to come is. Um, but screw it. All right. It's okay. I'm, I'm going to um, share my screen. Uh, Kaiser and I were the only people here the other night, and we managed to get 50 questions done. So. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. We got to beat that tonight. No rush, dude. Um. <laughs> What the fuck? Are these, all right, so this is one of these. Uh, let me see if I can make yeah. this smaller. Performance questions. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, look at all these. Okay, it's pinging there. What is going on here? Okay, so what's. What the fuck? Pink, 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 pink. This is obviously a DDoS attack or a ping of death attack. Is it trying to get that machine? Is it saying that it's going after that machine in the end? Let's see what the question is. Which of the following best describes the type of attack that is occurring? Smurf attack, man in the middle, backdoor, replay, spear fishing, Christmas attack, blue jacking, or ping of death? Oh, uh, it's a ping of death, Christmas. bro. Ping of don't death. Think? Don't you think? You see a lot of pings. You think I you think see so. a lot of things? You think ping of death? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, or how about let's Christmas talk about attack. some of these Christmas attack? Uh, what defines a Christmas attack again? What makes it? It's the way the code is. Yeah. So, smurf attack, it's not a man in the middle, no. Backdoor, no. Replay, replay I don't no. know. No. It's not, that's kind of like man in the middle replay. Um, this is a ping of death, dude. Yeah. Right? I think so. Let's find out. Oh. What's that? What's A? Smurf attack. Smurf attack. Den yeah, okay. Denial of service attack. In which large numbers of pings or ICMP packets with the intended victim spooch source IP are broadcast to a computer network using an IP broadcast address. Okay. What is that verse ping of that? Um, I don't know. We'll look that up in a second. Hang on. Mm. Wow. Uh, what was that, smurf to, attack? Gonna yeah, we're trying to understand exactly uh, what the smurf attack is. Wait, where is he? It's a, data, it's a denial of service attack, but they're trying to knock you out. Something about the fact that it gets broadcast by all, all channels or whatever. Ping of death. Uh, 
it said they thought it's back too. It's a malformed ping. See this? So ping of, de ping of death is acquires or achieves denial of service by a whole different means. It's a malformed or malicious ping. Uh, all right. There's a subtle. There's subtle differences. Yeah. My uh, my logs and my Splunk. Does it take long time for it to like to register? To find it? No, but make sure you like you follow the directions. Like sometimes you have to like pull up a bad website like five times in a row to make sure it make sure it takes the uh, make sure it brings up the alert. Okay. So when it says because I'm five, doing like the it'll say five I'm times in certain places. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, my bad. Um, it's like I was doing the test logs, but it's not like reading it. It just says waiting for results. It's not doing nothing. Though. Well, be patient. I mean, there's a time when it becomes ridiculous to wait, but it's not quite yet, I don't think, unless it's gone on forever. All right. A security administrator wants to deploy a physical sentry control to limit an individual's access to into a sensitive area. Um, keywords being physical sentry control. Which of the following should be uh, implemented? Physical security. Security control. What did I say? Sentry? Yeah. Sorry, I'm spaced out. Um, guards, CCTV, bollards, or spike strip. Um, to limit access into a sensitive area, I would say guards. Yeah, that's right. Because it's why? Because it's an individual's access, not a, not a tank's access. That's a baller. Yeah, so what's baller? Ballers are like um, um, those things that like pop up in front of a sensitive area where you drive in and they prevent cars from coming. Oh yeah, through. yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like they have them at the White House. Or... Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yep. Those are ballers. Guards, yeah. good, Mahmoud. Yeah. All right, you're reading. A vulnerability scan is reporting that patches are missing on, on a server. After a review, it is determined that the application requiring the patch does not exist on the operation system. Which, which of the following descri describes this case? Application hardening, false positive, baseline call the review, false negative. I feel like I've done this question before. That's false positive. And that's because you think it is and it isn't. And that's because the application does not exist. They looked and they're like, oh, shit, we don't even have that application. What? That's a mistake. We don't need yeah. we, that patch actually is not needed. Trust me on that one, bro. Yeah, that makes sense. I just sometimes I get confused between false positive and false negative. Yeah, false negative is the one where you think it's not, and it is. Mm -hmm. You think it's not a bad thing, and it is a bad thing. That's dangerous. Peter, an employee, was escorted from the company premises due to suspicious of revealing trade secrets to a competitor. Peter, Peter has already been working for two hours before leaving the premises. A security technician was asked to prepare a report of files that has changed since last night integrity scan. Which of the following could the technician use to prepare the report? Hmm. We're looking for hashing algorithms here. M MD5 is a hashing algorithm. You're damn right it is. You know what the other one is? No. HMAC. 
What's PGP? Pretty good privacy. Okay. Asymmetric encryption. Look which one is the a which one is the asymmetric inscription i mean this one this is asymmetric mm -hmm. this is symmetric i can't remember what this is um elliptical curve i think that's asymmetric it's symmetric but either way they're not they're not a, they're not a yeah that is oh two so uh md5 and uh, hmac mm -hmm. that's right Can I read the question one more time? I don't, I don't feel like I understood the question. It always happens when you read it aloud. So the, oh, the hash value is used. Yeah. Okay. Um, we may need to change question sets. I might. These look really familiar. <laughs> Oh yeah, these are familiar. Um, which of the following devices is best suited for servers that need to store private keys? Hardware security uh, module, hardened hmm. hardened network firewall. I think so it's A. Yeah, you're damn right it is. Hello? Yeah. HSM. Great, great TV station. Oh my God, my internet connection is going out. Uh, yeah, I said, I'll, I think it's A. Yeah, I didn't say anything. There it goes. What is going on? I don't know why this happens. Okay, well, let's just hope, ignore it. All right. If I know this one, then I'm, I'm going to have to skip up to the E's. Oh, yeah. Which of the following policies is implemented in order to minimize data loss or theft? Um, PII handling, password policy. Chain of custody or zero day exploits. Um, the only one that really sounds good besides the right answer is this, but that's not quite right. I think this is it. Is it zero? Is it? I'm not sure. I think that's it. PII handling. Although I've only heard of that once. Hmm. PII is personal information identifier. Mhm. Mm information, right? Mhm. Mm Which was followed in order to minimize that data loss or theft? Yeah, I think yeah. a password policy. I don't know. I don't know what the zero day exploits sounds good, but you don't use those to minimize data loss. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. PI handling or chain of custody. And I think it's PI handling. Let's find out. Yep. All right, I'm going to E1. Go. All right. Which of the following documents outlines the technical and security requirements of an agreement between organizations? RFC. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what's that S stand for? I can't remember. Interoperable. No. Oh, in interorganization security agreement. That's probably it. This is enter. And yeah, maybe. Hold on, let me Google it.
Internet security and accelerator server. No, that's not it. Let's see what they say. Interconnection security agreement. Agreement between two organizations that have connected systems. Interconnection security agreement. Yep. What's BPA? I know BPA only for plastic. Um, I don't know. Something agreement. Business policy agreement. Could be. All right. Let's take that one. Which of the following control? Which of the following controls can be implemented together to prevent data loss in the event of theft of a mobile device storing sensitive information? We did that, no? I feel like we did that before. Mm -hmm. Full device description, screen locks, GPS, S, asset tracking, inventory control. A full device inscription is probably one of the one thing mm. and uh, hmm. I'd probably say screen locks yeah because asset tracking and inventory control it's kind of sounds alike or even asset tracking and GPS could be the same thing too yeah I think A and B all right Mm -hmm. Good job, Charlie. Nice. I don't think we've seen that one th that way. Yeah, it was a different. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, Which of boy. the following can? Do... Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Which of the following can best help prevent cross-site scripting attacks and buffer overflow on a production system? <sighs> Input uh... validation. Yeah. Network intrusion detection centers, anomaly base hits, peer review. It's got to be A. Network IDS, host base IDS. Or host, yeah, yeah. We're trying to prevent something, not report on it. Yeah. Detection, it's just not, it's not enough. It's input review. validation, yeah. I think, I think in input validation. If that's what it sounds like it is, that basically means the computer doesn't trust the inputs it's given until you make sure you, you're good. It, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Matt, an administrator, notices a flood fragmented packet and retransmits from an email server. After disabling the TCP offload setting on the NIC, Matt sees normal traffic with, pack with packets flowing in sequence again. Which of the following utilities was he most likely using to view this issue? A spam filter, a protocol analyzer, a WAF, or a load balancer? Protocol analyzer. Mm-hmm. Spam filter, no. W WAF, no. Load balancer, no. Could be web application firewall. He disables the TCP offload settings on the network identity card. What is that again? Yeah. The NIC is, yeah. Reading packets, it is with protocol analyzer. Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. 
is like Wireshark. Wireshark is a protocol analyzer, right? Yeah. 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 I could be. I'm just saying that second so. that second sentence is like after disabling this setting on the NIC. It makes me feel like it's a firewall. He sees packets flowing normally again. Ah, oh, all right, let's find out. I'm gonna say C. You gonna say B? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Sniffer. Hmm. Okay. I overthought it. Jeez. Company A submitted a bid on a contract to do work for Company B via email. Company B was insistent that the bid did not come from Company A. Which of the following would have assured that the bid was submitted by Company A? Steganography, Dig hashing, encryption, or digital signatures? Digital signature. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. After Anne, a user logs into her banking website. She has access to her finance. She has access to her financial institution, mortgage, credit card, and brokerage website as well. Which of the following is being described? Trusted OS, mandatory access control, separations of duty, single sign-on. Yeah, it sounds like that one. Trusted operating system doesn't mean anything. Mandatory access control. That's uh, this is has to do with the uh, ACL. Mm -hmm. Separations of duty. Doesn't no, have any bearing here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the question states that when Anne logs into her banking, she has access to her other ones as well. This describes an SSO scenario. Okay. An, orga uh, an organization yeah. must implement controls to protect the confidentiality of its most of its most sensitive data. The company is currently using a central storage system and a group-based access control for its sensitive information. Which of the following controls can further secure the data in the central storage system? Data encryption, patching the system, digital signatures, file hashing, data encryption. Um, hashing for integrity and data for security, right? Mm -hmm. Well, not data for security, encryption. For I mean, security. encryption for security. Yeah, you, yeah. you meant to. You, you, you know what I meant. <laughs> I was trying to be hard on you. The no, no, no. That's wrong. That's wrong. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Data encryption. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, data encryption makes data and readable to anyone who does not have the required key to decrypt data. Quite. Results from a vulnerability analysis indicate that all enabled virtual terminals on a router can be accessed using the same password. The company's network device security policy mandates that at least one virtual terminal have a different password than the other virtual terminals. Which of the following sets of commands would meet this requirement? What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. What is that? I can't remember. 
line what's up Aiden how's it going guys hey man what's hey, going on how are you Aiden you showed up just in time perfect this question looks just it's got us by the freaking scrotum all right Uh, this has nothing to do with anything. This is the only one that I think makes sense. Oh, forget that. question is what is this command language here I think it's C it's a line from 0 to 3 how many how many uh, they didn't say how many uh, computers how many network devices no oh no no I think this said line I think from 0 to 3 the Password is this, and then line four. Password is this. I think this makes sense. The the D is the because it tells you about the zero, which is redundant. If <laughs> oh even A is the same thing. A A and C is almost the same thing. Line V T Y zero. What is this, what does this mean? This, you don't have any idea what this means. This could mean anything. Yeah. Yeah, but I think, I think you're right. I, th I think it's a command line, like, hey. <laughs> I have no, what am I talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, um, I see what you're doing there. No, 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 I think it's C. I know. You know, you know why? Because uh, the first one, it's, it would be correct if password was before the actual password. Like, that is wrong. Yes. So yeah, it's still, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, you got to put the password command in before you put the actual yeah, password exactly. in. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. See. Yeah, I think I you think. just have, to, it's common sense. I don't think you need to know how to write the stuff. You got to use the, your common sense to read this command. Excellent work, Mahmoud. Yeah. The VTI lines are the virtual terminal lines of the router. Control inbound and outbound telnet. Huh. Okay. Oops. Check. All right. That's. I'm still lost about this. Uh, I don't think you need to lines. understand the command, but it just read how it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Use of group account. Use of group account should be minimized to ensure which of the following. Password security, regular auditing, baseline management, individual accountability. No, I don't think it's about individual accountability, I think. Do you don't minimize your use of groups to make people accountable. You do it to make your passwords more secure. Right. Part, yeah. I don't think. I don't know. Is that, I, sh I sometimes I bring way too much logic to these things. Uh, me too, man. Me too. B's regular auditing. Okay. I don't think it's B. You don't think uh, it's auditing? Uh, okay. What's no. baseline management? Yeah, that's what I was. Baseline management. The baselines are always used in reference to your like your software. Not your software. Your your machines. Your your servers or whatever. It's like you take a baseline reading of how of what where they are on a normal day to know what's what's like what's abnormal. Yeah. So sense? how do you reduce group? How do you uh, minimize uh, 
I mean, how do you, how do you secure password by uh, group account size? Well, you're trying to you're trying not to use groups because when you use groups, and I think this question is implying that when you use groups, they all get the same password for to log in or whatever, the same account. And they don't like the fact that like multiple people in a group have access to the same account. That's a lot of like potential fuck up points. You know, anybody could be the screw up point. Okay, then that makes sense. Does it? Yeah, it does. You want to be careful when you use groups because everybody's got the same password, right? Be right. Come on. Nope. You were right the whole time. My God. I think even with the, within the groups, you create users. And then each user has its own <laughs> password. Wow. I'm shocked. The common method of breaking large, larger uh, network address space into smaller networks is uh, known as... Packet filtering. No. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely packet filtering. It's definitely phishing. <laughs> uh, subnetting, right? Yeah. yeah. Miserable old subnetting. Mm -hmm. I feel like this set of questions is easy. Which of the following is described as an attack against an application using a malicious file? Client side attack, spam, impersonating attack, impersonation, impersonation attack, phishing attack. There is no phishing attack. It's not phishing. Spam, spam is not an attack. It's not, you're not impersonating anything either. Oh, I mean, you might be, but. But it's not an attack. Do you guys know what they mean by client side? I th I have a guess on what that means, but I, this is like when you have like forward or internet facing servers in your DMZ or whatever, like th those would be considered cl the client sides, like the, the internet facing sides of all, all those machines or all those devices you have. So I think when those get hey. attacked, it's considered a client side attack. Um, let's find out. I just, I, spam is not an attack, phishing is not an attack, and impersonation is not an attack. I know, but now you're getting logical on me. I mean, I'm not sure in our advanced test-taking uh, metrics here we want to get logical because I think you, <laughs> it's really easy to over overread these things. Like, I've yeah. done it. I've already done it tonight a couple times. That last one was a good example. Uh, Client-side tax... Attacks target vulnerabilities and client applications, interacting with malicious data, blah, blah, blah. Server-side attacks is the other kind. Okay. Okay, that was a good one. Which of, Which the, of following... the following best? Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Which of the following best describes the type of attack that is occurring? Huh? Which of the yeah. following best describes <laughs> the type what? of attack that is occurring? What? <laughs> what kind of question is this? <laughs> Are you missing something from the question? Oh, they're, they're secretly attacking your computer right now, Charlie. What? The... Oh, it's... <laughs> it's. Look at it work. Uh, the attack that's occurring. <laughs> What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh, that's funny. I don't even know what we're supposed to do with this. Let's just see what they say. Oh my god, we didn't get any of this. Legit bank website and a hacker bank website. Let's scroll up. No, there wasn't anything else there. DNS spoofing, art poisoning, Jesus. This is a complicated question. 
Must be. I'll tell you what, right now, I'm gonna be <laughs> skipping these motherfuckers when I see them in the test. I'm just gonna skip them. When it's one of those questions, you can tell when it's gonna be miserably complicated. Which, Which of are the, the follow? Ooh. Go ahead, buddy. No, I got, I'll, th I'll take this one. Okay. Which of the following would best be used to calculate the expected loss of an event if the likelihood of event occurring is known? Select two. So if you if you know the likelihood, um, which two would you use to calculate the expected loss of the event? I don't even know what it's these. Okay, so the first one, is, DAC, is a red herring answer. ALE is annual loss expectancy. Um, that's in the that's in the family of the answers we're looking for, but that's not right. The C is single loss expectancy. I think that's probably what we want because then the Oh God, I can't remember what ARO is, but it's, it's, ah, damn, expected day of return or something. Oh, it's return objective. That's when you're targeting, you're going to be back online. I don't know what it, what the acronym stands for, but that's what it is. So I don't know what the answer to this is in that. Well, what's ROI? Return on investment. <laughs> I'm assuming. <laughs> All right, so we're expected loss of an event. I'm gonna, I'm gonna promise you it's C and D. It's got to be C and D, but I'm, I'm What's probably. What's D A C? I don't know. Directory access it... control. I think that's right, directory access control, which is not related to this, but I think they wanted to have five acronyms in there, and they needed two more, so. Uh, I think it's deferred acquisition costs, maybe. Oh, that's probably an even better answer than I and thought, in, whatever, whatever I said. An that, that sounds like it belongs with these, then. In insurance, deferred acquisition costs is an asset on a balance sheet representing the deferral of the cost of acquiring new insurance contracts. Okay. So it's quasi related, but like return on investment, it's only quasi related. Yeah. I still think it's it's it comes down to what if you understand what those three in the middle are. I'm going to guess C and D. Mm -hmm. And you better be right, you son of a Annual loss times the annualized rate of occurrence. Okay. Hmm. So you get the SLE first, and then you can do the annualized rate of occurrence to get the ALE. What a stupid question. I hate these questions. But they're all up in the qu in the test. You'll see them. The risk se section is legitimate. Aiden, go for it. A recent review of accounts on various systems has found that after employees' passwords are required to change, they are recycling mm. the same password as before. Which of the following policies should be enforced to prevent this from happening? Select two. Reverse encryption, minimum password age, password complexity, account lockouts, password history, password expiration. Mm-hmm. We did this, no? I feel like we. Uh, there's uh, we, two of we, them, right? Yeah, we, we haven't something done similar. Yeah, I mean, we've seen these. We're gonna continue seeing these. Mm. Is it a minimum password age, a password history, or password expiration? I think it's definitely password history. Um, minimum password age. Um, that might be it. I think I think password minimum password age is like you have to pass have it for so long, right? 
Yeah, it has to be. It hasn't been used. Like you, you cannot use the past ten password. That's not what can... minimum password age is, though. I think that. What is that? Is it password? I think the pa I think minimum password age refers to how long you have to have the mm -hmm. have have each password before you change. It doesn't let you change oh, like yeah, one yeah, after yeah. another. But I think think that's still relevant. So um, reverse encryption that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That sort of complexity that's not what we're looking for. Account lockouts. That's not what we're looking for. Mm, no. I think password expiration should be something. The password should expire like in ninety days or something like that. Mm -hmm. And password history, which is you not you you gotta use your password. You can't use the last password. Or you can't use the the last ten previous password. I think it's yeah. E and F. Yeah, that'd be my guess too. All right, I'm gonna stick with B and. B and E. Bingo. Okay. <laughs> See, it's, it wanted you to. It wants. It doesn't want them to change the passwords. This makes it. This makes them not change it so so often, right? Mm. Password is determined the number of previous passwords that cannot be used. <laughs> Boom! We got that one. Yeah. Okay. B. When a user is forced to change his password to a maximum password. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you, I see it. I mean, password expiration is the same thing too. You make they, the just, they don't. They don't want the people changing their passwords because because they, they feel like every time they do, they're gonna go do this. Mm -hmm. So the the other this this one was just that was just to deter them from changing it so often. I think that was a good question. Yeah. All right. Which of the following network devices is used to analyze traffic between various network interfaces? Proxies, firewalls. <sighs> firewalls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. What? Sniffer? Mm. Yeah, it makes it makes sense. I guess. Doesn't say in local network though. <laughs> mm. In order for for in order for network monitoring to work properly, you need the PC and the network card running in what mode? Launch, exposed, promiscuous, sweep. Prom promiscuous sounds good because I heard that I heard that a lot. <laughs> it's the only one I've heard of. <laughs> no, that's right. Let's see. An information bank has been established to store contacts, phone numbers, and other records. An application using uh, an application running on a Unix would like to connect to this index server using port 88. Which of the following authentication service would just use this port by default? I know that one. I think it's Radius. 
Do you now? Let me see. Let me look at my chart. Don't you cheat, you son of a bitch. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> look at the chart. It's Kerberos, bro. Kerberos? Yeah, Kerberos rocks port 88. Kerberos. Yeah, it's port 88. Makes sense, Aiden? Yep. Yep. That, that's just one of those ones where you just got to know port numbers. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, like, there's no finding your way through the let's, let's read that again and think about that part of that comment. Um, authentication services. Yep. 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 You're three, three almost identical authentication services. Directory authentication protocol. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And all it says, all it says to tell you what's right is, yep, Kerberos is 88. Good job, Charlie. Finally got one right about ports. The CISO, or no, the chief security officer, is contacted by a first responder. The CSO assigns a handler. Which of the following is occurring? We've got first processes and responses, so... Unannounced audit response, incident response process, business continuity planning, unified threat management, or disaster recovery process. Assigns the handler? Sounds like a mafia. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. Um, it's probably... I think it's A. Oh, my God. You think it's A? A, Mahmoud, mm -hmm. audit response. This has nothing to do with audits. This is a, a disaster, a fire or something. A first, re first responder. Oh, it's like they talk about like, I thought they first responded like the, within their team. Like, like no, this guy's like fire chief. Fire, he, call, fire, he calls oh, the CSO oh, oh. and then walks in the door and the CSO goes, here's Johnny. He's going to take you where you need to go. So, like, the CSO acted like nothing is happening? <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to delegate. Yeah. I think it's this. I think I have, no, I have no idea, but I think it's uh, uh, Okay. It could be. Incident response process. No. Uh, Maybe. And this makes sense, too, on some level. So does this, I suppose. I don't think I don't think the first responder cares about business continue, continue. I don't, I don't think he cares about auditing. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> no, I miss I misunderstand. <laughs> what what you said? I read the first responder. I was like one of their teams, like those first. <laughs> no, I mean I think we're assuming this is Johnny Fireman. I hope so. Um, <laughs> My vote's for B. B incident response process makes sense. Uh, I'm sticking with D. I don't know why. It's something about this word. Why it's not disaster recovery process? Why don't you guess it and we'll uh, find out? It's not recovery, though. We're not in the yeah. recovery phase. No. So it could be. I think it's B. Okay. What about... No one's going to guess C? That's a good answer. B. B. I don't think, I don't think first responder cares about business continuity. Cares about... Uh, I didn't guess it. I guess this. Yeah, like, like just thinking about it from like when I think first responder, I'm not like I'm just concerned about like you know what's, go, what's going on and yeah, it's like mm -hmm. safety exactly. Yeah. Like what's going on? Like, do I need to put out a fire? Do I need to stop a robbery in progress? Something like that. Yeah, you know, I just think that's an incident. I got to respond to it first thing, and then we'll you know answer question. We'll ask when answer questions. Later. I just like the CSO man. It's like hey, here's Charlie. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. yeah, here you go. Here's Here's little Charlie. He's an intern. <laughs> uh, that was like an example. Of, the example was an example of that process, I guess. Instant mm -hmm. response process. Aiden, you want to take this one? Sure. Several sure. users' computers are no longer responding normally and sending out spam email to the user's entire oh, contact list. That sounds great. This is an oh, example God. of which of the following? Trojan virus, botnet, worm outbreak, logic bomb. Uh, what? 
It's got, this has got to be a warm out break. These things what are trying, they're trying to get out to other machines. What is botnet? A botnet is a, is a network of uh, zomb zombie computers that a, an actor controls to do a number of different things. So you can do a DDoSs with them, or you can mine Bitcoin with them, or you can do... Basically, it's just huge computer networks of computers that have been taken over all around the world. Got it. Okay, then that doesn't... That doesn't... That doesn't jive. I mean, that, the only thing that sounds familiar about the botnet is it's like so many emails, but it's not going... It's not like the botnet's coming in. It's not like all those messages are coming in. They're going out. Yeah, yeah. So this thing is trying to propagate itself, and when I hear that, I think it's a warm audio break. Yeah, there you go. That's what. That's the thing that tries to propagate itself. Yeah. There's no time factor here. Yeah, I mean, that's always an attractive answer, but the fact that it's sending out email messages on its but own. But it's not. But it's not a torsion. Torsion is like, it's a legitimate thing mm -hmm. yeah like a virus going inside the legitimate thing you know yeah yeah you play past yeah it's a c okay. yeah hmm I don't know about this part. I don't know about this first part. I suppose. Typically, less malicious, maybe, but... A security right. engineer, Peter, has been asked to create a secure connection between his mail server and the mail server of a business partner. Which of the following protocol would be most appropriate? HTTPS, SSH... FTP TLS. The most secure is TLS. Appropriate? I don't know. It's not FTT. If it's not FTP. It's just mail. It's just mail messages. Mm -hmm. It's not HTTPS because there's no web. Okay. Server. Mail server to mail server. Yeah, it's either secure, SSH or it's DLS. Secure, it's, it's definitely SSH for me. Um, okay. I don't, I don't, TLS, I still don't know what to make of. I don't know what to make of TLS. Like, it can go on the backs of other protocols. It's often found on the backs of other protocols. TLS. It's weird. I don't quite get it. But I feel like this is B. This is how you go server to server. Because um, they, yeah, because, and it's also, um, uh because you're going across different i'm guessing you're going across networks here you're going oh, yeah. your yeah. mail server and a mail server of a business partner i'm doubting that they're on the same network so if they yeah. were you might go tls but i think is that is that the way we should think of that that's a good thought here's that's, a, that's that's my uh that's my brain trying to trying to rack its way around this so i like that that's good thinking um okay so i believe tls okay well that's fine you can guess tls i'm not you got it yeah okay i was wrong the whole time Fuck christ here comes kaiser <clears throat> But I guess they're on different, uh, they're on the same network, right? I don't know. Where do you see that? Hey, Kaiser. Hey, Charlie. Oh, sorry. Uh... Mm. Okay. Here's the question, Kaiser. Security in the X dot 
Yeah, these things, I, I thought these were, uh, Yikes, huh, to Kaiser? This is a tough one, huh? It is, yeah. The other guys knew it. But, here's the thing. If I didn't see the answer, uh, I would eliminate HTTPS, SSH, yeah. and FTP. All three, I will eliminate them. Mm. The only right? remaining was TLS. Why would you eliminate so, TCP, uh, TSSH? SSH? SSH is like secure connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has nothing to do with like a uh, mail server. Mm. It's like you connect it, uh, you do like a continuous connection, do whatever, and then uh, get out. And TLS is like, uh, I wasn't sure, but like uh, I would go for that one, just guessing it. TLS is, is, is the new version of SSL. Mm -hmm. Yep. SSH? SSL. SSL, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to complicate things more, I'm pretty sure SSL and SSH go off the same the same protocol or the same port. There's like, there's like five SSL protocols. And, uh, hold on one second. Five different protocols use port 22. I would say we didn't have to know those, except that it's just through a Kerberos port number question at us. And I've seen a few of them, like LDAPs and all the male ones. All right. What are you reading, Kaiser? I was checking my paper. Okay. But this one doesn't say anything. TLS. No, this one doesn't say anything. Uh, let me see the ports. I'm checking the ports. Uh, first. Ports. No, where are they? I don't see them. There it is. Okay, so... I'm looking at it right now. Look at your screen. Oh, here. Okay. Let's see. Where is TLS? Hey, sir, what are you looking for this? Yeah, mm -hmm. you could have just uh, looked behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it, Kaiser? No. There oh, you yeah. Game. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, see all these. See all these blue ones here. These are going over secure sockets layer. That's what I guess I was talking about. And then I think there's it something. S SSH is 22. Yeah. SCP, SSH. And where is TLS? TLS and SL, they go together. See, I don't think you can find TLS on here. I don't think it got its, I don't think it's got its own port number. I don't. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Okay. SSL TLS encrypted SMTP uses 465. See, there's like all these later ones. There's like there's everything's got a normal port, and then sometimes this they uh these two guys, this guy or this guy will be on the end of it, and it changes the port number. Something weird that we don't know and we wouldn't be expected to know. Okay. All right. The chief risk officer is concerned about the new company BYOD device policy and has requested the security department implement mobile security controls to protect corporate data 
in the event that a device is lost or stolen. What level of protection must not be compromised even if the communication SIM is removed from the device? Which of the following best meets these, the requirements select two? We, one is device encryption. Mm-hmm. As, as, uh, I think screen lock and device encryption. We just, we just did that, Charlie, earlier, but it yep. was a different question, but it's, yep. mm -hmm. yeah, it's B and D. Yeah, it's not. Tracking. So they don't have a policy yet. They're creating this policy on the fly, and they decided... They want this is to. a really vague question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Even if you remove the same asset tracking, asset tracking. What is asset tracking? Like, uh, did you put in like it's a tracker? Knowing or where something? your it's knowing where your shit is. It's knowing where your, in this case, data is. Is it a data or is it a device? I feel like it's, it's, a device. it's their device. It's the employee's device. So what's the geo tracking? Is the same thing. Geo tracking is going to tell you like where the device is, but it's not going to tell you where the data is or how to protect protect the data you gotta encrypt it and i guess you've got to know where the fucking thing where the stuff is i don't it's weird oh, okay i don't understand your i i understand your question now in the context of that um it feels like the same thing this has to do with the phone probably this has to do with the data inside the phone yeah. no no the asset tracking is like uh, who is in possession of the uh, no hold on. Yeah, it's an inventory in thing. The possession yeah. of the oversight device. over inventory. Yeah, inventory like yeah. Asset yeah, physical tracking. device. Who has yeah. it? Yeah, it'd be like who has it, and then geo tracking is like where is it? Who has yeah. it versus where is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think it's. Uh... Kaiser, you want to read? Yeah. During the information gathering stage of a deploying role-based access control model, which of the following information is most likely required? Role-based. Matrix of chart titles, clearance level of all commit normal hours. No. Conditional rules under which certain systems may be access time to go to sleep <laughs> no <laughs> it's too early mm. i think it's got to i mean if they're doing if they're in the information gathering stage of putting this this rbac model in um they need to know that I think, but clearly, I like C. I need um, to. Is it choose two? No, it's. I hate these uh, most likely required. Well, this is something to do with the role-based access control and the non-role-based access control. There's, there's something like if they're if they're going into that model, they wouldn't be using that model. So maybe clearance levels would make sense. Because maybe they were in just a. How about A? Uh, I mean, yeah, that makes yeah. Conditional rule under which certain systems may be accessed. That sounds right to me. Fuck, Aiden, any thoughts here? I don't know what to do. No, nah, I'm stumped. I think it's A. All I know is that it's not D. That's the only one. But... Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the other one's... I hope, I hope not. <laughs> Sometimes you'll be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Most I feel like it's either A or C. <clears throat> I guess I'd say A as well. Roll-based. 
Hit it, Charlie. I still think it's B. B, yeah, suck it. Suck it. Job titles is roles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Mm hmm. I don't know what the hell this is. Access to resources by user account. That's like individual. Mm hmm. Yeah. Discre discretionary access control or something. All right, several departments in, in a corporation have a critical need for routinely moving data from one system to another using removable storage disks. Excuse me, removable storage devices. Senior management is concerned with the data with data loss and the introduction of malware on the network. Which of the following choices best mitigates the range of risks associated with the continued use of removable storage devices? We're looking for which choice best mitigates the risks. Mm. I mean, this kind of makes some sense to me. I think it's... it does, yeah. Policy which detail control on removable storage use. That's that's the policy. Wouldn't it just be this? Oh I mean the boat I any mean, they're all good. But which one is the best? They're concerned with data loss. That can happen accidentally. Mm -hmm. Numbers? And the introduction of malware. The, those two in combination. If you do um, like full disk encryption, will it stop? If it? it's data loss, like we said earlier, security is encryption. <sighs> yeah, I didn't say that not all mobile devices support the mobile store. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we're supposed to know that. But does the question talk about about mobile devices? No. Okay. You can assume they're talking about mobile devices. This has got to be removable. Removable. Oh, okay. I don't Maybe. know, though. It's just support removable storage. Okay. iPhones, they don't have remove removable storage. Uh, Android, Samsung, uh, I don't know the newer ones, but like uh, S10... They have, uh, you can SIM card, insert you can like SIM card. Extra, yeah. extra card. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, that, uh, what's it called? Uh, SD card. That mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. SD card, yeah. Those are, but not all the phones, they have uh, SD cards. Right, you guys read that one. I'll be right back. i shut my lights on. Okay. Emily. The chief security officer has had four security breaches during the past two years. Each breach has cost the company $3,000. A third-party vendor has offered to repair the security hole in the system for 
the bridge system is scheduled to be replaced in five years. Which of the following should Emily do to address the risk? Okay. This is a math problem. Uh, during the past two years, that's uh, ALE accepted loss. Uh, annual. No, ex what is that? A annual, a annual annual loss, loss of yeah exp expectancy. Yep. So. Um, a ALE and so SLE. Like yeah, it should be just. Four is th uh, three thousand. So four has like um, twelve thousand dollar. Yeah. Uh, after repair, the company who's fixing it is charging twenty five thousand dollar. The bridge system is scheduled to be replaced in five years. So let's say every year they have. Um, They're spending six grand a year. Two bridges, actually. Yeah, six grand mm -hmm. in five years. Thirty grand. Thirty thousand they will spend, right? Yep. And this guy is charging twenty five grand. So which one? So six years, six thousand. So six six is okay. That's, System okay, twenty five. That's like six thousand per yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, both of them. If you ignore it, you'll save five thousand. Oh no, you don't. You actually lose five thousand if you ignore it. If you transfer the risks, you save five thousand. Yes. Except except the risk saving ten thousand. No, the math is wrong. BTG the risk saving. It's the last one. D. Because it's six thousand yeah. dollar a year times five is is thirty thousand. Thirty thousand, and he's yeah. charging twenty five. If you go with twenty five, you will save five thousand. Then yeah. you'll transfer the risk. Yeah. D. D. Nice. Well, well reasoned. Who's up? Which of the following protocols is used to authenticate the client and server's digital certificates? Digital certificate. Um, it's not DNS. It's not TLS. It's not ISM. Peep, peep is a, a sim, asymmetric, right? Ex, ex, extended. Extensible uh, authentication protocol. Extensible yeah. authentication protocol. I don't know what the first P is. P is protected, I think. Protected. PEEP is the, the version after e, EAP, it's like a more secure version Which is more EAP. secure. Yeah. yeah, more secure. Oh. <laughs> see? TLS Come again. Come on, again, see? Okay, we need to learn a whole lot mm -hmm. more about TLS. Mm -hmm. It's coming in different shapes and forms. What the F? A, com a company is starting to allow employees to use their own personal without centralized management. Employees must con contract IT to have their devices configured to use corporate emails. Access is also available to the corporate cloud-based services. Which of the following is the best policy to implement under these circumstances? Acceptable use policy, security policy, group policy, business agreement policy. <clears throat> hmm. Their own personal devices, I guess. They're missing yeah. devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This first A. Security policy. I think it's acceptable use policy because it's, it looks like the system is on the on the cloud. 
which is already have a security thing in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say A2. A, no explanation. Okay. <laughs> Which of the following is true about the CRL? Revocation list. It must. It must. It must be. Uh, it must be kept public. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they have a yeah. Why, Mahmoud? Because people. People need to know those keys that they were revoked. So the certificate People authorities. Are system. Hmm? They need to know the certificate authorities who have the yeah. bad. I guess the I guess the people who got certificates too. Yeah. Which certificates are done basically? All right. Hit it. What is it? Yeah, that's what I said. In the operation. I think you explained that to me the other day, Charlie. Mm -hmm. The revocation list is one thing I figured out. Yeah, I can do it now. Just Which of the following the would a network security administrator implement? Which of the following would a would a network administrator implement to order in order to discover comprehensive security threats on a network? Um Good job, Hannah. See? Yeah. Yep. Am I correct in saying that if you if you scan somebody's network, it's con like you're committing a crime. You've already you invaded their yep. space, right? Um, yep. You know, like uh, there's one uh, on Saturday evening uh, network class like I'm hold on coming. let me show you something hope i'll find it i'm coming uh, you did it and you can scan like entire network like the whole world in under five minutes but you can be in trouble too uh is that uh nmap no well that's i'm pretty sure the guy uh the one guy that did it, that scanned the whole world, did it with Nmap. That's that. Sometimes they use that background in my thing. It has the the Earth or the world. It's the internet. All right, so I shouldn't be vulnerability scanning anybody. I should make sure I'm hidden, I guess. An insurance company. Uh, the reason he said, like, uh, I'm huh? sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. The reason he said, like, uh, if you scan the entire world, like every uh, system in the world, like some governments, uh, they don't allow that one. They will come to you and say, like, why is it happening? Or <laughs> it will be like, uh, if you are scanning the entire world, like, uh, DOD will be scanned and they will come to you and say, oh, Charlie, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to out hack the government, any government. Yeah. I mean, no. If you do the scanning, and they will know, basically. Maybe if I'm behind a reverse proxy and a VPN firewall or a VPN uh, IP shuffler. No. I think Let's... one re one way you can do is like uh, you have a server or a compromise, compromise server, like uh, somewhere. Uh, in the middle of 
Africa or Asia or Eastern Europe, you use that one and you can uh, log in with a different something like uh, going from somewhere else, like four or five jumps and then go there and then start from there and use that server. I'll just have my zombie botnet do it. Yeah. Vulnerability scan everybody. All right. An insurance company requires an account recovery process so that information created by an employee can be accessed after that employee is no longer with the firm. Which of the following is the best approach to implement this process? And the process, again, is... Oop. Kismet Wireless. Yeah. And the... <clears throat> All right. Uh... Employee is required to share their password with authorized staff prior to leaving the firm. That's never going to happen. Passwords are stored in a reversible form. No. Authorized employees have the ability to reset passwords so that the data is accessible. That would work. All employee data is exported and imported by the employee prior no. to them leaving the firm. It's got to be C, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Yep. Just by reading them out, you can almost... Yeah, the ability to reset password, yep. I like this. <sighs> Somebody pick me up. The security administrator is concerned about the strength of a user password. The company does not want to implement the password complexity policy. Which of following can the security administrator implement to mitigate the risk of an, of an online password attack against users with weak passwords? Increase the password length requirements, increase the password history, shorter, shorten the password expiration period, decrease the the account lockout time. Uh, I think it's D. Because an online password attack, no. they do a brute, brute, brute password attack. So they try multiple passwords. So, so if you lock out within like three tries or four tries. You're just saying after you do it four times or whatever, you're going to be locked out for 10 minutes, not 15. Decrease the account lockout time. I think... Oh, oh is, that, is that what they mean? I thought like, it was like decrease the account, like the decrease the amount of tries. That's what I thought they meant. No. No, that's, that's the specific thing, the account lockout time. That's how long you're prevented from getting back on or whatever if you, okay. if you, if you fuck it up. I think it's... It's got to be A, right? Yeah. His history doesn't do it. Shorten the password expiration period. Mm. Mm. you got to do something about those passwords. You can't have short, weak passwords. If it's only mm -hmm. six characters, it's crackable. If it's seven characters, it's harder. Yep. Let's find out. See, see. Okay. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, but still, like, uh, if they have 30 days or 90 days policy, uh, it has to be like at least 30 days. And 30 days is a lot of time. A long time. For somebody to work yeah. on cracking your password, that would never happen. Nobody would spend a month trying to crack a password. Yeah. That's craziness. I mean, I guess you would if it was somebody... 
Uh. Jen, a security administrator has been tasked with explaining authentication services to the company's management team. A company runs an Active Directory infrastructure. Which of the solutions best relates to the host authentication protocol within the company's environment? Okay. Uh, active, active Directory. It is uh, LDAP, right? Or Takakas? Yeah, I think so. I think it's LDAPs. I mean, Active Directory Infrastructure, TACX. <laughs> Host Authentication Protocol. Local Directory Access Protocol, I think. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all authentication except for the B. It's D. D? Yeah. That's what I think. LDAP. Oh, God, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Kerberos. Active Directory is Kerberos. Jesus. Oh. Microsoft, Kerberos is a Microsoft product. Yeah. Hmm. Which of the following should Peter, a security manager, implement to reduce the risk of employees working in collusion to embezzle funds from their company? I know this one. Okay, you know what should be. You know what it is. You send them to vacation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whenever embezzlement mm -hmm. funds, it's that's like... what you do. Dead giveaway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a company is concerned that a compromised certificate may result in a man-in-the-middle attack against back-end financial servers. In order to minimize the amount of time a compromised certificate would be accepted by other servers, the company decides to add another validation step to SSL TLS connections. Which of the following technologies provides the fastest revocation cap capability? I don't think you need to overthink this. I don't know. C. Yeah. I'm with you there. I don't think it'd be that easy, but I don't know. It's probably D intermediate or uh, or A, but I'm gonna guess C. Not B. I mean, it could be anything. But public key infrastructure, not cryptography. B BKI. Online certificate status protocol. <sighs> Okay, O C S P is better than C uh, C R L. And C R L is better than okay. the C A. Wow. <sighs> Hang on a <sighs> Okay. Mm. The company is concerned that a compromised certificate. No, oh, that's is the that same the same one? one? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. The security manager wants to unify the storage of credentials, phone numbers, office numbers, and address information into one system. Which of the following system that will support the requirement on its own? S A M L. SAML? The Kakos, Radius, these are like authentication protocols. LDAP is the same. So, SAML, what is SAML? Uh, I know Charlie knows that. Security 
Authentication markup language. Security assertion markup language. Assertion markup language. Assertion markup. Okay. Mm. I I've, I don't Lightweight know. directory access protocol. It's B. I think, I think we did this quick. I think already. it's A. I think it's A. Yeah. Mm. Directory. What was the other one? Though it was Kerberos, it was in directory as well. TACX radius SAML. Oh, no, no, no. Earlier, the the previous question. It was Kerberos about. I think isn't it was, it was about access control. Too? It was before that. Oh, uh, domain directory. No. We said it was LDAP, this one. Yeah, this one. Isn't it the same question? They want to put all their no. information into some system they can access it just it sounded like their directory to me i guess yeah. this one is not a microsoft machine it's not the same thing i don't think that that's not the same thing this is a bunch of different information that uh, i don't know i didn't feel like it was the same thing All right. Which of the following functions provides an output which cannot be reversed and convert data into a string of characters? Hashing. A hashing. A hashing. Yep. What are the keywords here? Cannot, cannot be, be reversed. reversed. Separation of duties is often implemented between developers and administrators in order to separate which of the following. More experienced employees from less experienced employees? No. Changes to program code and the ability to deploy to production? Maybe. Upper level management users from standard development employees? No. The network access layer from the application access layer? I think it's D. Change the program code, changes the program code and the ability to deploy the production. I think it's D. I don't know. Developers what I feel. and administrators. No. I'm, sticking, I'm sticking with B. Separation of duties. How the changes to program code and the ability to deploy the production? How is that yeah. separation of duty? Well, the people that actually change the code can't actually bring it live. They don't have the ability to bring it live. The people that bring it live are separated from them. So you don't have a, somebody just fix, fixing it and going live with it. You actually separate the duties. They fix it and then they take it live. Okay. Best practices, I guess. I guess.
the call center supervisor has reported that many employees have been playing pre-installed games on company computer and this and this is reducing productivity which the which of the following would be most effective to prevent this behavior acceptable use policy host based firewall content inspection application whitelisting d i absolutely knew you were going to say d <laughs> i knew you were going to say d why not a because pre-installed right installed uh, i don't think application whitelisting refers to the actual actual video game applications they're already pre-installed are they i missed that one the call center supervisor has reported that many employees have been playing oh okay a. A, probably a yeah i thought they installed them themselves no no yeah but they're already installed oh, <laughs> I quit. I swear to God. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay. I guess that would make it the most effective. Why even they have like pre-installed games on there then? I absolutely, it's a ridiculous question. <laughs> yeah. I do not think for one second that that's what application whitelisting is really for. I mean, I guess, but... Wow. All right. You win again, CompTIA. <sighs> Which of the following is a best practice when dealing with user accounts that will only need to be active for a limited time period? No password history? Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. I think it's B. Yeah, expiration date on the account. Yeah. That's a limited time. Yeah. A. Yeah, I think it's B. Yeah. You notice this one was like a tricky one? It's like set an expiration date on the account, then set a password expiration date on the account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Company XYZ recently salvaged, salvaged company laptops and removed all hard drives. But Chief Information Officer is concerned about disclosure of confidential information. Which of the following is the most secure method to dispose of the hard drives, degaussing, physical destruction, lock up hard drive, and secure safe, wipe. What is degaussing? Degaussing is when you take specialized magnets to either side of your hard drive that completely scramble all the information and make it uh, irreparably harmed. And it, it, my friends, is your answer to E39, degaussing. It is more, it's the most, it's the safest of all those. Physical destruction? You put them in a furnace and burn that shit out of them? I mean, that's not what they're describing, though. They're saying you, <laughs> physical destruction could be anything. It could be just smashing them. <laughs> like, yeah, if you burn them like that, yeah, you're going to be good. See, I say, like, I look at disclosure of confidential information. You can't disclose something that you, like, physically destroy. So, I'm... Yeah. I'm All right. Maybe that is the safer. I'm I sticking with... The, I'm, I'm sticking with degaussing. I'm thinking it would be, yeah. Mm. Oh, this is good. An acid bath. Yeah. Incineration. That's what I'd say. Yeah. This is this is fucking. Which of the following utilities can be used in Linux to view a list of users? 
failed authentication attempt, bad log, fail log, wrong log, or kill log. I think it's fail log. That's what we it's study. Fail log. That's that's the only thing that comes into my mind. So yeah, I mm -hmm. fail log. It is. Yeah, yeah. That's what we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Authentication. Yeah, yeah fail authentication. On uh, Splunk. Mm -hmm. Which of the following means of wireless authentication is easily vulnerable to spoofing? Mac. What is WPA leap? Least it's, authentication? It's, yeah, it's another EAP protocol. Yeah. And which. Hmm. I th oh, I think it's enable SSID. C, I mean D. Yeah. That enables broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like yep. that answer. Let's see. With a uh, evil twin or a rogue access. No, that's not the right answer. Mac. I've heard Mac of Mac spoofing. Yeah. It's network interface of your computer. Yeah. Like with extensible authentication protocol. Okay. Light extensible authentication protocol. Okay. <sighs> security administrator implements access controls based on the security classification of the layer. I need to know information. Which of the following best describes this level of access control? Police privilege? Mandatory, I think. The mandatory is the one that cl classifies all the data with its own security label and then your your ability to look at it in comparison. It's not it's not B role based because it says and the need to know information. I think because it says um Access controls based on the security classification of the data okay. and need to know those two in combination are mandatory. Mandatory is where everybody gets like a security level and every document gets a security level. And if you have the right security level, you can look at every, you can look at all the documents. But it, it's the only one I think where they actually give each document a security level. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay. I think that what, what you want to look for when you are seeing mandatory is the data is all given security levels. Every piece of data is under that system. A security analyst has been notified that trade secrets are being leaked from one of the executives in the corporation. When reviewing this executive's laptop, they noticed several pictures of the employee's pets are on the hard drive and on a cloud storage network. When the analyst hashes the images on the hard drive against the hashes uh, on the cloud network, they do not match. Which of the following describes how the employee is leaking these secrets? Steganography. E. Steganography. Steganography. 
pretty cool. Steganography. Mm -hmm. Ay, ay, An organization does not want the wireless network name to be easily discovered. Which of the following software features should be configured on the access point? This one, SSID broadcast, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm just Man. scared it's going to be Mac filtering yeah, again. <laughs> it's not. I think. Ah, thank hey, you. Yeah. Numerous network broadcasts are named known as an SSID broadcast to reveal their presence. Peter, a security administrator, is concerned with with users with users delegating into the, the restriction area. Given a limited budget, which of the following would best assist Peter with detection this activity? Place a full guard at the entrance of the confirm user identity. Install a camera and a DVR at the entrance to monitor access. Revoke all proximity badge access to make use, users justify access. Install a motion detector near the entrance. So it's got to be within budget, right? Limited budget. Yeah, well, I think it's C. Mm -hmm. What? No. What a motion detector can do here? Nothing. It'll just like detect somebody coming in. It uh, won't help you with tailgating. Install. Yeah. A, yeah. Install a camera and DVR at the entrance to monitor access. I think that's the only yeah. one which is like you can monitor. I mean, they don't yeah. have a budget to put a full time security guard. Devoking proximity yeah. badges to make users justify that's, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Really, that doesn't really detect much. This is tailgating thing. Yeah, tailgating is. Uh, is yeah. I think I think what's given a limited budget scenario here. I think you just do the the cheapest way is to revoke all proximity badges access to make you I mean people when people come in you sure who's coming in. But still that doesn't solve the tailgating uh, issue. Yeah. Tailgating is like somebody doesn't have a badge. They just Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you revoke the badge then you, he can't just tailgate. I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah, you'd have to uh, put, a, still, put up his phone. Somebody like uh, they are following somebody. They don't have a badge. They just uh, follow someone. Even the one That's that they're true. following it, they can't get access. But still, like they have to go to somewhere to justify access. I mean, that's like overhead. A lot of overhead. I don't know. Charlie, what do you think? Oh, I'm pretty. I'm pretty set on C. Yeah, me too. C. Okay, I'm, let's see. I'm going on B. Oh, nice. <sighs> Somebody's got to watch that camera, though. Yeah, and then you wouldn't know exactly. You wouldn't know till it happens, and you gotta go back and look at. It. I don't know. This is a really. Uh... I mean, I get it. It makes sense under budget, but that being said, I don't know. Oh, here we go. Radius. An administrator needs to secure radius traffic between two servers. Which of the following is the best solution? It requires IPsec with an H, AH between the servers. IPsec, it's on VPN. Yeah. Require. Uh, I think it might be valid radius here. Is for Windows, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. What's AH again? 
Authentication header. Authentication header. I think. Requires the no. message authenticator. No. For each message. Nope. Authentication That's a host. Messaging thing. Uh, I think it's C. C. I think it's C. I feel like I've seen this MS CHAP. MS yeah. Chap version version two is like for Microsoft uh, handshake. Microsoft handshake. Yeah. But Radius is specifically for. Uh... <laughs> That's also Microsoft. Oh, TACAS Tac is for it's Cisco, right? TACAS. Yeah, yeah, that's a Cisco. Radius mm -hmm. is a. So oh, yeah. it's C. Makes sense. Yep. <laughs> hey! <laughs> he says, talk to that one. Hmm. The question doesn't give Traffic you too much information. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Peep MS Chat version 2. Eep TLS and Peep MS Chat version 2 are commonly used in accepted as secure authentication methods. Eat peep. Oh. An organization has three divisions, accounting, sales, and HR. Users in the accounting division require to access a server in the sales division. But no users in the HR division should have access to resources in any other division, nor should users in the sales division have access to resources in the accounting division. Which of the following network, seg network segmentation schemas would best meet this objective? So hang on one second. Accounting needs sales. Sales does not need accounting. HR doesn't need anything. Hmm. So HR should be separate. That's done. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And sales shouldn't have like uh, access to anyone's e anyone either. I think I think it's A. <clears throat> Because, I mean, within the VLAN, you can have one access to the other without the other one access to the first one. Creating three separate VLANs, you just separate and everything. But you can access them. You can have them access to whatever you want. Use it the trunk protocol? Where do you see that? It's trunk. I think it's D. Where do you see trunk? No, I'm just saying, if you have three separate VLANs, in order to one VLAN to communicate to the other VLAN, they use the trunk protocol. Yeah, right? which is what you set up when you have three separate VLANs and you have one specific need within that, that that uh, accounting can use sales. So you pipe that one trunk line into the sales VLAN, sales. And, that's, and that's the only connection you have between the three. Okay, then it's D. I think. Yeah. Okay. It didn't click until you said that trunk, trunk word, mock word. Hmm. What, forgot, what did you I say? Forgot, I forgot about how to connect different VLANs through the trunking protocol or whatever, trunked connections. Yeah. 
recent audit of a company's ID identity management system shows that 30% of active accounts belong to people who no longer work at the firm. Which of the following should be performed to help avoid this scenario? Select two. I like D and I like A. A. Yeah, D. Regular user account review. What do you think, guys? I don't think this is a horrible idea, but you have to. Oh, have... it's select two. Mm-hmm. We we we're selecting A and D at least. Kaiser and I are. Just dropping in C ain't gonna get you there, bud. I think B is a good one. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh... Yeah. A is a good one too, but I don't think, yeah, you can do it. Like in my company, if you don't use your account for like, I think one, two pay periods, it will get deactivated. Yep. So what do you like? <sighs> I feel strong about that one, Andy. Ah, Andy. I think ten days is a is a short time, a short period of time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's really yeah. short. If it was like thirty days, I would say okay. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, like it says at least ten days, so that threw mm -hmm. me off. Like you could have made that whatever number over ten. But that's through me for a loop. Because like 10 days is like, I go on a two-week vacation and I'm going to come back and my account's going to be disabled. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Damn it. Two more. Which of the following application security testing techniques is implemented when an automated system generates random input data? Fuzzing. Uh, didn't, didn't we have something on fuzzing like a couple of months ago where we just wanted to do like a rabbit hole on fuzzing? Yeah, I think so. I remember that. Yeah, yeah I think that I think this is I think this is just one of them. I think it's fuzzing. It's just it's when you see them. These three words right here are the key. Yeah. Uh, so so what's fuzzing again? Hang on. Um, fuzzing is when you throw random random data at an application. Does that make it? Yeah. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. And input validation is like just uh, when you you uh, getting uh, you are validating whoever like uh, signs in or enters some kind of data. In, yeah, input validation is when a uh, it's like you have like the computer like allows you to ver to verify you are who you say you are before before it takes your data input like so it's like you can't get random input information from some hacker or some third party mm -hmm. like so it checks back with you to make sure it's the correct thing in this case when we see this i think we've got to think fuzzing All right. Yeah. So, what did you say? XS, XSRF. That's another. Uh, it's a. It's another cross site. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, I can't remember what the RF means. Let's find out. Re 
quest forgery. That's right. Mm -hmm. You get a hold of some other user besides yourself that the uh, application actually trusts, and you start putting malicious commands in. All right. Which of the following techniques enables a highly secured organization to assess security weaknesses in real time? Access controllers, continuous monitoring, video surveillance, baseline reporting. B? I think it's B. B. In real time, B. continuous yeah. monitoring. Yeah. All right. That was great, guys. Good. Oh man, it's it's kind of humbling, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just when you think you know something. Yeah. Looks like I will never be ready for the test. Dude, I I keep taking it on the chin. I got like five in a row tonight I missed. How'd you finish it during in that Kahoot the other night? Yesterday, like uh, uh that was good. Not good. No. I mean uh like I did, be, I did the best in that last game and I only got sixty percent, dude. That's not near enough. Yeah. So that's pretty humbling, too. It almost makes you want to go back and do labs, which are the most mis miserable, emasculating things to do. Kaiser, you know what lab you're on? Oh, uh, seven one I finished. Uh, yeah. Seven, yeah, I think seven two I need to do now. Mm-hmm. I'm on 7.3. It's taking me forever. I got to go do it again. All right. These still, these labs are kind of good, though. I think I think we'll be possibly using stuff like this in our jobs. It seems like the grunt work of the new employee to do the logs, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Is it snowing up there or what? Yeah. As they said Thursday, we're going to have a big snow. Yeah, a couple of inches. <laughs> well, that sucks. We'll be back here Thursday. Oh, there was a, some kind of a, a tornado or something, or like a storm in Florida. Yeah. Panhandle somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw like the tornado. Oh. Yeah, it was pretty wicked. Oh, man. Uh, all right, fellas. Tornado is not a normal thing over there, right? Tornadoes? They're normal in all kinds of places. All right. All right. All right, good night, guys. Good night. See you all All right, good night. See you tomorrow. All right. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye.